So I went looking for fish oil and I couldn't find any fish oil. No New Zealand fish oil and we're surrounded by water. Basically, we got the hokey oil. We started working with it. And I was using it on the other dogs because I thought, well, 25 litres of hokey oil. What am I going to do with it? And their coats got better. They were easier to groom. Um, my older dogs were less stiff and more active and I was having to actually exercise them again. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of A Kiwi Original. This is episode 10. And on today's show, I am speaking with Fiona Robertson from Newflins, the founder of Newflins, uh, who looks after the welfare of some of our most loved creatures. And I'm not talking humans, I'm talking our most beloved pets, which we spend as much time as we can with. And they certainly want to spend as much time with us as they can, our little furry friends. Um, So welcome on the show, Fiona. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for inviting me and for for taking New Flims um, under your wing. It's been awesome. It's great to have you part of the, the you know the New Zealand made community because you're certainly a very active part. And um, I wanted to give you the opportunity to to share the New Flims story. Um, Maybe take us back to. You know, when you were a uh, registered uh, veterinarian nurse, and then um, what brought you uh, to the point where you thought, actually, there's a product that needs to be created here? So I I did veterinary nursing way back in <clears throat> the 90s um, and worked for a number of different companies back then. Um, we did testing um, for farm equipment as well. And, and so my animal husbandry goes back many, many years. Um, and prior to that I graduated um, otherwise known as the Fitzherbert pub at the time <laughs> we did Mass University in first year vet so um, I, I've had a lot of um, background in that and had a, had a bit of fun when I was a lot younger um, and then you know I met my partner and we ended up with Newfoundlands and breeding them and showing them and, and I was able to use my um, veterinary knowledge and research and development knowledge as I breed my Newfoundlands over the years, and during this time, obviously, you learn what health um, situations affect each of the breeds, and one of them was a condition called DCM, which is dilated cardiomyopathy, and it's a terminal condition, but it doesn't just help, you know, hurt our, our, our cats and our dogs and our fur babies, it also affects humans as well. So there's a bit of research that's been done in it um, and around it. Um, to find out what, what works and what doesn't work. And the Newfoundland breed um, is also one of the breeds that is um, susceptible to it, along with boxes and cavaliers, and there's a whole range of breeds. Um, and so that, along with the cardiologist who I'd, who I'd sort of got a good bond with, he's a veterinary cardiologist, and we'd worked really hard on making sure that, you know, any puppies I was producing, I was trying to do the best genetic clue from a a heart perspective and from a health perspective, the pups and elbows and so forth, to make sure that they were all doing the right thing. I was trying to do as good as I could with the testing we had available at the time in the 90s. Um, And as we sort of got into the 2000s, we sort of ramped it up and we changed testing a bit as as the modifications came through and improvements came along and different genetic testing came out and so forth. Um, And I'd bred from a particular bitch quite a bit which I really enjoyed breeding from and as she got older she was about to have a change between testing so they, we used to do hip and elbow dis- dysplasia testing in New Zealand um, under one scheme and then in the US there's another one called a pen hip scheme and so what I decided was I'd take a, a couple of my dogs I don't think three or four dogs at that stage is what I planned and I would do both schemes so that we had data that would match each scheme and we could see if we were improving and whether it was helping our breeding and our, our progeny and whether or not we were getting healthier and, and fitter. So um, and I took all of them down to the vet clinic. We did the hip and elbow testing under the New Zealand way and we were doing the American testing on the same animals. So we had at a base to work from in a comparison. Unfortunately, when we were doing the pre-exam on one of my bitches, um, she didn't pass the pre-anesthetic check. And they called me, and at the time I'd sort of dropped them off at Matter Matter, um, loaded down to Taupo for a couple of hours swimming with the other dogs we had in the car because we'd done a swap over. And I turned around and said, oh, um, my phone's gone flat. My battery's gone flat. So we got back to Matter Matter, found out that um, Rosie, who was my girl, 
hadn't been able to feed the hun, and it was because she had pre-tests that went right. So they took an X-ray and they diagnosed DCM, and we sent, went off to the cardiologist and I spoke to Rich and I said to him, well, what can we do? And he said, well, it's terminal. And I was aware it was terminal because being a vet nurse in my background, it was terminal. Um, what you can do now, he said, is look at how you can support her quality of life. And I said, okay, that's cool. What, you know, what sort of things can we look at? And he said, well, you know, you can do fish oil and other supplements and stuff. And so I went looking for fish oil. I couldn't find any fish oil, no New Zealand fish oil. And we're surrounded by water, by ocean. And you would think, look, this is logical. Why are we not making our own fish oil? What's going on here? And the further I looked into it, the more I researched it, I found that the hokey oil had been made and that there was some scientific data to prove that the EPA and the DHA, which are part of the omegas in the fish, that help um, with the atrial fibrillation, which is the um, heart beating and uneven speeds, um, would help with her condition of the DCM. So... Basically, we got the hokey oil, we started working with it, and we did some more work with it, and we found that, yes, it helped Rosie. And from there, it just sort of went to the point where we could see other things were happening, and I was using it on the other dogs because I thought, well, 25 litres of hokey oil, what am I going to do with it? And their coats got better. They were easier to groom. Um, my older dogs were less stiff and more active, and I was having to actually exercise them again. <laughs> rather than just sort of <laughs> wander around the paddocks with them. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, hang on a second, what's going on here? <laughs> so um, I sort of had to sit down and think about what I was going to do and whether I was going to actually help everybody else with this and help other animals, which I really wanted to do, or whether I was just going to sort of, oh, well, you know, that happened for me and I'll just walk away and continue doing what I was doing. So I made the decision to go further on and, and change everything and and try and help as many animals as I could without actually physically having to help them, so through the products. And so from from there we sort of went into our first production in bottles um, of a, a white bottle, 200ml bottle, um, and probably somewhere around here there's a bottle <laughs> sitting that's, that's one of those that I kept from many years ago. In fact, there is actually way up the top there that I can see from here. Um, and, and it just sort of progressed from there. We tried different things. We tried little samples. Um, we did 50 ml bottles. We've now got into our 200 mils and our litres that are going really well. And people around us that have, over the 10 years we've been in business, used our oil, have noticed the difference in their animals. They've noticed the, um, the, the ability of the older animals to move more effectively and faster. We've got currently a 16-year-old um, golden retriever who... Um, if he doesn't have it for two to three days, he seizes up. Now, he's not my own personal dog. He's a neighbour down the road's dog. And they actually walk him up here about five or six k's to come and get his oil <laughs> from me. <laughs> because at 16, he can still do that. And they, be, when he was about 14, before they started to get onto the oil, they could see he was getting slower and slower. And they sort of got him down to about a 20-minute walk. And once they started putting the oil back in, he was back up to three-quarters of an hour walk, which was not a problem for him. So they were really wrapped, um, and and it was really good because I was getting people that were using our products who I had no idea who they were. I didn't know them from Adam originally when they first started using our products, and and people from the internet, you know, sending us messages saying, "Look, our dogs have done so well. We're so thrilled. You know, we want to order more. How can we get more? How can we, you know, utilize it? Or we always say how wonderful your products are. So it's sort of gone from one to another. It's been quite crazy." <laughs> So you, you you started off uh, wanting to give the you know the best end of life care that you could for your own pet uh, Rosie, yeah. and then yeah. these unintended consequences that were all positive for Rosie. Uh, then you gave it to your other dogs, and you saw the same type of, of things to do with their coat and um, their ability, yeah, their mobility. Yeah. Um, what? So this doesn't replace um, pet food, does it? This is a this is a supplement. So how do, how do you? Um, how do you give it to a dog? Like, what's the if you if you're normal, you know, you're feeding your dog normally now. How does that change when you're adding in a hokey treat or a hokey oil? Okay, so with Rosie, um, we got the oil version, so we decided to go. Um, I don't know if you can see we've got pump. So you squirt it over their food, and um, the good thing we found about with Rosie is obviously her heart improved. Um, it didn't, you know, she wasn't cured or anything. Um, 
but we had other medications. So she was on heart medication for her her um, her heart, you know, um, tablets and so forth. So what we could do was we could crush those tablets up and then mix them with the oil, and we knew that she was getting what she needed. So the supplement, the oil is a supplement, and it works alongside medication, and it works alongside food as an additive is as a helpful. It's not never ever a replacement for veterinary products, and it's never a replacement for food. Um, and it should should be looked at as as a partner that works, a, coll- a collaborator. It works to help um, effectiveness. So if you, for example, got a dog who's got um, tablets that he's got to take, and he doesn't like the taste of tablets, and you crush the tablets up, you can you can do that and give that to your dog. If you've got a dog that um, is very fussy and doesn't want to eat their meal, but you know that they're on a special diet, they're meant to have this veterinary diet. Um, you can use the gravy or you can use the oil on that so that you know that they're getting what's required and what's being prescribed for them. Okay, so, so you've got different products. They're all um, fish yeah. oil related, but they're different mm-hmm. flavors to help kind of make sure your pet actually eats it. Yeah. So what actually happened is I started with the oil, but then I looked at the whole fish and I went, you know, we're killing these fish just for the oil. We're not actually making a holistic look and a whole use of this fabulous animal that's given its life for us so that our animals can have a better life. So I, I looked at the entire fish and I thought, well, what can we do to make sure that we we do that? So we've got the flesh, which is um, just purely hokey flesh, which is freeze-dried, which are treats. Then we've got the oil, which is from some of some some of the different bits and pieces of the fish, basically. Um and then we've also got the gravy, which is anything that's left over. So anything that's left behind is all stewed down, compacted, compressed, um, and concentrated, extremely concentrated. And then from that point, it is then um, made up into a gravy again. So there's a whole story around using the whole fish, and nothing goes to waste. It's about you know caring for the environment, the animal, and being sustainable as well. And where are your products uh, available, Fiona? Like what's... Um, who sells these and where can people buy them? We've got a range of different places. So we've got online stores, for example, pet.co.nz, um, pet stock um, shops throughout New Zealand have got our products. Um, we've got them on Amazon in the US and Amazon in Australia. We have veterinary clinics that are stocking our products. We have um, independent merchants who stock our products. We also have people that are really interested in working from a holistic animal health side of things so um, hydrotherapy centers um, people that are doing physio so it's quite a broad range of different people within the animal industry that stock our products um, and it's just about finding those people that want to, to to pick up our story and work with us and and collaborate with us the way we want to collaborate with the animals sorry to interrupt this won't take long subscribe to the show and you'll never miss another one of these amazing episodes right back to the show what's some of the feedback you get from customers who have used it um super shiny coat very healthy dog um love the fact that they they finally found something to eat um (laughs) this is from a a wellingtonian has said that um it's like giving her cats crack so it's kitty crack (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love that name. Which is that's probably great. not appropriate for this, but it's, <laughs> it was um, it's something that's that's cracked me up immensely. Is, is actually um, <laughs> yeah, that that's come from Singapore as well. Um, you know, it's like it's like our cats are on on kitty crack, <laughs> so so it's a it's a healthy form of um of an addiction, I'd say. Yeah. Classic. I, I mean, I've heard of catnip, but I hadn't heard of the uh, the kitty crack. Maybe that's the the twenty twenty version yeah. of catnip. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, it was it was um, a bit of an eye opener for me, that's for sure. So um, yeah, I didn't realise. I mean, I have my cats are a bit um, stupid, and they do like our products. And I've got one that just basically lives in the warehouse and helps himself to any of the bulk product that he can attack. Um, <laughs> I just threw him out earlier, but um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see other people's. I mean, my animals. I think, oh yeah, well, my animals do it because they love me and it's around and. But to get people who I don't know, you know, saying things like this and and then sending me videos of um, their their cats opening cupboards so they can get into the the treats and so forth is is quite funny. (laughs) 
If someone yeah. um, is just hearing about Newflins for the first time in the, the Hokio range that you do, what's the, the first product that they should be buying? Like what's the, the, the first one to see if your cat or dog actually likes it and responds to it? Yeah. So for um, it depends on the animal. Like there's, there's a lot to it. But for m the majority of animals, I would say go straight to the Hokio. So that would be this one here. Sorry. Plug here, but I'd go straight to the basic hokey oil, um, and that's easy to use. It's a maintenance product, and it's something that you'll find out if your animal likes the taste of it, or if they sorry, a bit high on maybe, um, if they like the taste of it, or if they um, if they're gonna not like it. It's it's a small 200 ml packet. It's readily available um, online. It's a reasonable price at 36 dollars, and it will last a Labrador a good month. Um, for those animals that have got a known issue, so they may be arthritic, they may be older, cats over the age of seven, vets have said all cats over the age of seven have got arthritis. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Yeah, I know. It was quite a shock when I read that. I was quite surprised. So um, so are cats, when, was, they, when they get older and they slow up, are they slowing up because they're in more pain rather than they're getting older and they're slower? Some of the research is suggesting this, yes. Um, I don't know all of the research, but this, the research that I've read recently um, has been around um, that the, the reason that cats are um, slowing down over the age of seven is because they're ageing and they're becoming arthritic. So, um, yeah, to hear vets say, you know, over the age of seven cats are considered to be arthritic um, is amazing because most people think about giving supplements to their dogs. They actually don't think about giving supplements and treats to their cats and yet there's a huge amount of people out there that love their cats and like to feed them and like to treat them beautifully um which is surprising for for your, for your average dog owner um it's well, i i <laughs> come from a, a cat family and uh you know my mum's got a, a berman cat and oh. that cat gets some really good food like it's not cheap food i, I remember it's just when i was around once she said um can you go down to the supermarket and get a tray of this um not just the particular food type, there's a particular flavor because the cat Bizzle only likes one particular flavor. It's that pedantic. And yeah. now I'm thinking like Bizzle's like 10 years old and uh, I, I kind of always think um, there's a back fence that we've got and she, she, when she was young, she could jump in one bound and then, you know, five, six years old, it would take her a couple of bounds and so she'd have to start on the, the garden bed. Maybe something like this would give her a bit more of her energy back to be able to protect her patch. Yeah, it might do. We do have the same issue. Like, there is salmon oil on the market, obviously, from King Salmon. But um, we do have the same issue with cats right across the whole board. They are very, very fussy and very finicky. So if they like the hokey oil, great. It works really well for them. But if they don't, if they're a salmon fan, awesome. If they're a no-fish fan, you're out of luck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's, it's, it's fish <laughs> so or nothing. Pretty much, yeah. So this is straight fish. And the thing is, it's really digestible because you're not, you've you're not got capsules, you've not got mixed oil, it's straight hokey oil. Um, so that's why it's a good a good way to start and to see if there's any effect. If you've got um, an animal that's going for surgery, has got kennel cough or anything like that, then I'd really look at um, adding an Aramega eye. So this has got an antioxidant in it, which is, um, it's an algae. Oil. There's a little bit of research just starting to come to the forefront on this now. Um, it's called astaxanthin. Now, a lot of people have heard of krill oil, and krill are harvested out of the ocean, but they're also the baleen whale, the heron, and the penguin's food source. Um, what we do with ours is it's actually grown in ponds or it's grown in big plastic tubes, um, and we use that as our ingredient. And so um, and the reason it's in the red is because when you squirt it over the dog's food, it's actually a really bright red color and people sort of get quite a shock <laughs> but it's a really potent antioxidant known to, um the most potent antioxidant known to man as far as research can tell at the moment um yeah so that's it's well worth looking at because it okay. gets rid of antioxidants and helps um it just helps get rid of all those nasties in the cells and helps rejuvenate and, and elongate the life of the cell which in turn hopefully elongates your life and let's um, let's change tack here and, and just um, shift the gear away from the actual products and, and the, the benefits for uh, pets and pet lovers. 
uh, and talk maybe a little bit about the business itself because we've had a, a few chats and emails over the last mm. year or so about um, you know just talking about you know how to grow a business um, when you've got all these different things you could be doing or should be doing. Um, what's what's your kind of take on where you want to head in 2020 given you know the the, the changes that are happening you know right at the moment. Um, I, you know, I was just talking to another food business and they were saying that this has been, uh, you know, year on year, their trades up 50%. Does that flow through to pet food or are you seeing a, a, a drop off like a lot of the hospitality uh, tourism type businesses? We have seen an increase, but a lot of it has been from the export sector. So um, a lot of our product had, that we used to get very cheaply and easy access to has actually been sucked up by the export market. A lot of our product, um, over in Asia, in particular China, the market over there has changed, the culture has changed, the dynamics have changed. So people in China are wanting to have cats and dogs as pets, they're part of the family now. And because of this, the, the market in China has just absolutely exploded with the requirement for ingredients for pet food, pet food, shelf-ready product. And it's just, it's massive. It's taken off immensely. Um, in the last 10 years, where you would have had, you just never sent, any, sent anything to China. Now it's, you know, pretty much taking as conservative suggestion because I wasn't at the last conference, but I would suspect around about 80 to 90% of New Zealand ex pet export stuff is going out to China. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And we've had a lot of what were big industry players 10 years ago when I first entered the industry, um, from a business perspective, that is. Um, a lot of those guys have been bought out or they've sold out um, to a company that's either been purchased by Chinese or they've been purchased directly from by Chinese investors. So there's a lot of um, Chinese investment has gone into the pet industry in New Zealand. Um, there's also been Chinese have come in themselves and set up their own businesses and companies and purchased our ingredients that we ordinarily have access to. So yeah, just because our resources are finite in New Zealand and, and everything is done by quota management um, when it comes to the ocean um, and even land base, there's only so much we can produce. It, it's that demand for product has increased significantly over the last 10 years um, in New Zealand. So. I would have to say that's a that's a growth factor. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for the Chinese consumers, where are they buying your products? Are they buying them on, on the online platforms over there or through their supermarkets? Yeah, so China's um, we our business itself doesn't um, directly send into China at the moment. We used to send into Hong Kong, um, but unfortunately, our distributor was not as responsive as we hoped. So we ended up back backtracking in Hong Kong. Um, and in hindsight, I think that's quite a good a good choice considering today's situation. Um, but they can get them through Singapore or Malaysia. We've got really good stockists both there, both in those places. But they often purchase through Amazon. Um, the Chinese the Chinese person that has a pet wants the best for their pet, and they'll purchase the best, and they'll purchase it either on Chinese markets online, or they'll use overseas markets and have it shipped over to China, depending on exactly what it is they're after and that can be anything from a collar through to a bed to you know a product like i produce or a food yeah. and so does that mean if you do you have your products then in warehouses in either australia or the us um to go on to amazon or, or are you shipping them directly from new zealand um i, I work with another company that does the amazon side of things for right. me because i'm only me in the company at the moment yeah. um it, it's easier for me to have collaborations and have partnerships with other companies. So I've got a company that does the Amazon side for us. It's hard when you're a small business, isn't it? To, to um, know where to focus because you need almost probably 10 to 15 people to actually specialize along, you know, finance, operation, engineering, product development, marketing, sales, real estate, HR, exporting. Then you've got all the different digital platforms that there's a ton of different things. Um, so the ones I, I talk to, it's like, well, what what do you love to do? Because that's probably the area that you're going to spend the most time. But then you're going to need either um, other people within the family or within your network to do the things that you don't want to do, but you know the business needs to do. So it's it's good to hear that you say that. Yeah, it's 
Yeah, although I'm still bad at doing what you've just said. I'm really bad at wanting to spend my entire time developing new products. And I've probably got about six or seven products I could bring to market tomorrow. In fact, I know I've got two, but I'm just I'm getting the capital together to sort out the, the printing of the packaging because it's ready to go. But, yeah, <laughs> You're not alone with that, Fiona. Cash is king. There's, um, it's, many of the manufacturers I go around, they're always tinkering and they're looking for the next thing. And you have to, you have to spend time tinkering because that's what's got you to where you are now is your new product um, introduction. But at the same time, it's that getting products to market is almost 80% of the work once you've launched. And unless you've saturated a market, the, it's pretty hard to justify going to launch another another product, unless it's a bundle. Um, but I'm looking, you know, looking behind you. There's a number of different ways of getting that hoku. Or ho there's a hoki treat there. Um, so if yep. someone's in New Zealand wanting to buy your products now, to, is your website like newflins.co.nz? Is that the place they'd purchase? Yeah. Yep. So everything's newflins. I've tried to make it very simple and easy, and I've used newflins. I know it's a difficult word, but once people get the hang of it, saying it a couple of times, it seems to roll off. I guess it's like Nike. You know, when people started Nike, they were like, whatever. Nike, Nike, and eventually it sort of got out there. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to do with new ones. I didn't want to um, take a word that could be um, misinterpreted or misseed or, or done the wrong thing with. Um, I just wanted to make up something that was made up and go for it. Um, but in it, it sort of represents new for New Zealand, F for Fiona for me in there, um, and lands as in New Zealand at the end as well. And if you had the proper extended version of the Newfoundlands, which is what Rosie was. So it's got that connection there as well. So. I like it. It's got some meaning to you. I remember uh, the uh, reading somewhere about the, the Nike story with a swish and when the, the design got presented forward uh, to Phil Knight, he's like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but it's what they've done since then. So it's what you do with it more than what a... Mm -hmm. Um, what the the look or feel is it's where you then take it um, during the you know the lockdown with COVID-19 um, are you able to are people able to buy your products during this period of time or should they be stocking up or shopping normal what's the what's the go um, I've done to my clients that are regulars um, I sent an email out and said look get in quick because we've got um, a, pretty much um, one of our suppliers has said we're not going to we're not going to be open during this time, so we've got uh, about 200 units. I've said look, we can get rid of 200 units, and after that we have to wait until our next run is done, and that would depend on when our supplier will open up. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss with the pet industry because MB are still making decisions about what's required, what's essential, what's not. Our treats have been classified as essential today, which is great, so we can see we can ship out all our treats. Um, I think the not too distant future, well, I'm hoping the NB will see the sense around the hokey oil um, and that they'll accept that to go. Um, the fact that it's a food and it's going into an animal's stomach. Um, we've also got clients who are single protein animal people who can't have anything but a single protein at a time um, because they're on specific dietary requirements. And so we need to be mindful that our clients that are on those that are requiring our hokey um, are using it and getting it because it's it's important you know we can we need to keep these animals as consistent as we can because that lowers the, the visits to the vet clinic mm. and it makes it easier for the vets at the moment because they're struggling with what's going on and they're trying to keep their head above water and they're trying to deal with what the new procedures they have to put in place in order to deal with the animals in the clinic so um it's just you know trying to keep things as consistent as possible and easy as possible for everybody Sounds like a great way of doing it. It sounds like you're you're on top of it with the the right people to make sure that your your products can get through. That I'm hearing in the background, I, like I'm I'm in Wellington CBD at the moment, and it sounds it sounds deliciously rural there. Like um, uh, you, you must where where are you based at the moment? So we're based um, in Pukekawa, which is um, our, our closest town is to Tuakau. So um, yeah, we've got quite a bit of a drive, a 20, 20 minute drive for me to get. Um, product to a courier basically at the moment um yeah we are rural so we've got that luxury we've got the ability to walk on our property without leaving the property which is great um we also have a dog park here which i run privately and that's um run by donation so people can come and they can run their dogs 
here. They can get swimming lessons in the dog pool and they can, um, in summer, obviously, um, and they can um, have their dogs in a safe environment. It's off leash where they know that they're not going to get into trouble. They're not going to be in, um, they're not going to be attacked by the dogs or whatever. And they've just got that ability to, to be comfortable. Um, and we started that about four years ago. So it just gives people a chance to have a place where they are safe with their dogs. And it's, it's super for new mums who are coming out who are just starting to get a handle on how to deal with a baby and how to deal with the dog at the same time. So in a lot of situations you get people who rehome their dogs because they're having a baby and it's like, well, hang on a second. If you've got this opportunity to, to work out how to work them together and you can bring your dog trainer here or you can bring, you know, um, you can bring your, your mum to help you, you can work it out in a safe environment and you don't have to think about rehoming that fair baby. You can learn about how you're going to integrate them into the family, which is really important. Got it. Um, Fiona, before we wrap up, is there any question I haven't asked you or any topic you want to cover that uh, that um, you know is, is important for the New Zealand-made audience out there to, to hear? Um, gosh, there's probably loads. <laughs> <laughs> I just everything we do we try to be as sustainable as possible um, so all our hockey is, is sustainably fish the MSC certification that goes into getting that species um, certified the work that goes behind that the research that goes behind that I think a lot of that is not acknowledged enough um, in New Zealand and I really um, that along with the, the support we get from by New Zealand made is really it's really what helps us to keep going. It's really good. It's it's um, it's a driver to keep us in business. And these all the clients that are coming through that are having the wonderful results, which we are just adore, and that is really helpful as well. But also having that that collaboration, that support from from the industries that we work in is really important. And you know, it's, it's great to have that and, and that ability to to be able to access these places in New Zealand and, and know that. And, yeah. Well, I hope that through your network, when this uh, goes live, that it gives people maybe another dimension or a, a deeper understanding of what Newflands is all about uh, that goes beyond just the health benefits, but uh, why you do what you do. And, um, you know, for our Buy New Zealand Made audience, a lot of them are pet lovers. We know that when anything we put up that's pet related, they certainly get a high level of engagement. So I'm going to make sure that we put in the show notes and um, on our social posts, we'll put links through to the Hokie Oil so that anyone who's been watching or listening this can go through and, and try out maybe one of those 200 mil uh, packs for their dog or their cat. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for being on the show today, Fiona. Your episode, I think I said episode 11. Um, we're going to try and get up to around 100 episodes uh, this year to really start to build a picture of what New Zealand manufacturing is from big to small in all different industries, all shapes and sizes. So uh, it's great to talk to a business that's been around as long as yours. You know, any business that goes beyond, I think, two to three years is doing something right uh, because you have to get customers not to buy once, but to buy many times. And uh, if yeah. you're getting repeat business, it's because you're doing something right and you're solving a problem, which means for anyone looking at these products thinking, do they work? Well, a decade in business says they definitely work for a group of people, so why not try it out? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Sure. This has been a Kiwi original brought to you by the New Zealand Made team. Thanks for watching. Uh, the New Zealand Made trademark is used by over 1,200 businesses in New Zealand. Uh, the New Zealand Made team licenses that trademark. Check if you're eligible at buynz.org.nz. If you feel that someone should see this, share it with them now. Otherwise, subscribe to youtube.com forward slash buynzmade. We'll see you on the next episode.